Does anybody know how to spell Adolf Deisman's last name? <laughs> Adolf Deisman. Probably an E and an I in there. Yeah, I, it is, and that's what I don't know. It could be D I E or D E I. Or D E I. I if if it if if it's Geitz? what? Is it with the T Z Geitzman? No, it's M A N N Mann. Uh, it's and I think it is D E I. I think it's Deisman, not Diesman. Uh, in German. I-E is D-E sound, and E-I is I sound, the, the diphthong. What? What comes after the D-E-I? Uh, S? Not Z? No. So. You, you can always uh, Google the name? That's what I'm going to do. And, uh, and I, I have it. probably have it correct. Oh, yes. First, what Maybe. Was the first name? I have a... Uh, uh, Webster's Collegiate Dictionary that has a biographical uh, thing. and of all things his name is not in there. What's the first name? Charles? What? What's the first name? Adolf. Adolf. He wrote a book Light from the Ancient East. See. Here it is. What? It's Adolf Geisman Geisman D E-I-S-S-M-A-N-N. -S -S okay. Two S's and two okay. S's. And an E-I. D-I-E-S-D-E-I. -E S-S-M-A-N-N. -N. All right. He has so a... Says Google. What? So says Google. Well, Google is right. <laughs> Most of the time. Uh, the... Uh, <laughs> The reason I want to put his name in this introduction is that uh, I'm talking about the use of Greek tenses of the verb. And uh, no English translation I know of. And I've got no quite a few, perhaps 25 or more. The only one that even makes an attempt is the New Jerusalem Bible, which is uh, the uh, Roman Catholic modern translation. And they don't do it consistently. The verb in, in uh, Greek tells more about the kind of action it is than the time it takes place. Now, in the indicative mood, they, it has to do with time. But any other mood, imperative, subjunctive, uh, whatever, uh, it has, has nothing to do with time. And he tells a delightful story. In 1895, realizing he didn't know that much about the Greek language, and he wanted to in order to study the New Testament in Greek, he went on a sabbatical to Greece and just talked to people. And he was staying with a rural family, a fairly well-to-do farming family, and in the wee hours of the morning, the family dog started barking. And the father of the family hollered at the son and said, stop that mutt from barking. And the son stuck his head out the window and said, stop barking. And he used the uh, aorist tense, which means to stop doing what you are doing. And then he said, and changed to the present tense imperative and said, and don't start again. And all at once, a light bulb went, over, went off in Deisman's head. And I want to include that. Uh, see, because you tell a little story like that, people can understand what you're getting at more than they can uh, just from abstractions. Guess who I've learned that from? What? Max. <laughs> he is one of the world's great storytellers. Uh, he is, it just comes natural to him. Uh, 
he picks up illustrative stories like a sponge sucks up water. Uh, just wherever they're there, uh, he, his brain just reaches out. He's amazing that way. And if you can tell a good, appropriate story, then you have reached more people more effectively than any other way of teaching.